स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया हेलो स्टूडेंट्स सो इन द प्रीवियस क्लास वी स्टार्टेड विथ विथ एग्जाम्पल्स एक्चुअली बेस्ड ऑन लेवल सर्फेसिस एंड हाउ डू वी कैलकुलेट द नॉर्मल ऑन अ गिवेन सर्फेस एंड ऑल्सो वी इंट्रोड्यूस द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ डिरेक्शनल डेरीवेटिव सो टूडे वी विल प्रैक्टिस फ्यू एग्जाम्पल्स बेस्ड ऑन डिरेक्शनल डेरीवेटिव एंड आफ्टरवर्ड्स इफ टाइम परमिट्स दैन वी मूव टू आर नेक्स्ट टॉपिक सो टू स्टार्ट विथ let me uh, start with um, with with uh, one example on uh, uh, directional derivative so today our example one um so the example goes like this uh, find the directional derivative so find the directional derivative directional derivative of the scalar function f x y z so we have a function in three dimension uh, geometry uh, this function is uh, x square y z plus 4 x z square at the point so as we know we always have to calculate the directional derivative at a certain point and at the same time we also need to have a unit vector um, towards in the direction of which we will calculate the directional derivative so at the point what is the point here the point is 1 minus 2 minus 1 in the direction so this is our direction of the vector 2y minus j minus 2k all right i j k are the unit vectors so let me adjust my chair first all right so here so now we are going to solve this so here the given scalar function the given function is f x y z equals to x square y z plus 4 x z square and in the previous class we saw uh, the directional derivative of a given scalar function at a point p is given as a gradient of that function at the point p times the unit vector uh, in the direction of which we are calculating the um, the directional derivative so here first of all we need to calculate the gradient of this function at the point p so this is our point p so um we will calculate gradient of f which is a vector quantity and gradient of f would be del del x of f del del y of f and del del z of f and then k so if i do partial derivative with respect to x then this will be 2xyz plus 4z square times i and then del del y so this will be x square z the second uh, term doesn't contain any uh, y so the derivative of second term with respect to y would be zero so here it will be j and uh, del del z of f so this will be x square y plus 8xz times k all right so that's our gradient of f but we need to calculate the gradient of the function at the point p because that's where we are calculating the directional derivative so what is the value of gradient of f at the point p so this is one of the notations to write gradient of f at the point p and the point p is 1 minus 2 minus 1 so the value is we substitute all these things so 2 times 1 times minus 2 so this is very simple to do and uh, i'm pretty sure you can be able to do this simple calculation um i plus you substitute the value for the rest of the variables here uh, in i and j in uh, j and k so ultimately if you calculate 
then at the end you will be able to obtain 8 i minus j minus 10 k. So, that is the gradient of the function f at the point p um, and uh, it is being calculated for substituting x equals to 1, y is equals to minus 2 and z equals to minus 1 in this, exp in this uh, uh, expression here. All right? So, that is our gradient of f. Now, in order to calculate the directional derivative, we need the unit vector. So, here in this case, we have the given vector, but is it a unit vector? It is obviously not, because if it is a unit vector, then the modulus of this vector should be 1. So, that is what we mean by unit vector, that the mod of that vector is equals to 1. But in this case, it is certainly not. So, for this vector, we will obtain a unit vector and we will see how we do that. So, the vector, uh, the vector in the direction of which, in the direction of which the directional derivative d d is supposed to be calculated, supposed to be calculated is given by. So, what is the vector? we have 2 i minus j minus 2 k. So, I call it as let us say a. So, this is my unit vector, uh, this is my normal, uh, this this uh, uh, how to say uh, a normal vector. So, uh, well not that normal. So, this is basically the given vector, uh, do not focus on normal or anything else. So, this is the given vector from here I have to obtain a unit vector. So, the unit vector will be obtained by dividing the vector a by dividing the vector a with its magnitude right so the given vector is 2i minus j minus 2k and uh, when we divide it by its magnitude it will be 2 square plus 1 square plus 2 square so it will be 9 so we take 1 by 3 out and then it is 2i minus j minus 2 k. Now, it is a unit vector. So, if we take the uh, how to say magnitude of this uh, a cap, then this will yield a 1. So, that means, this is a unit vector. Therefore, therefore, the required the required directional derivative of f at p what is our p? Uh, p is 1 minus 2 minus 1 in the direction of a cap in the direction of a cap is given by uh, directional derivative d f at a cap is equals to gradient of f dot a cap. Here instead of a cap, I will write a because uh, we are calculating basically in the direction of a. So, it does not matter whether we write a cap or a, it is just that uh, if we write a here, uh, the in the formula, we should be careful that we always write the unit vector because uh, here we have a unit vector always in the formula. So, the directional derivative, I have chosen a notation d f, although the notation does not play a big role here. You can ignore the notation and use your own notation for the directional derivative. This is not universal in a way. This is just my notation to signify that directional derivative of the function f in the direction of a cap. All right. So, now here we have gradient of f at the point p dot a cap. Now, gradient of f at the point p is given a. by 8 i 8 i minus j minus 10 k. So, 8 i minus j minus 10 k dot a cap, a cap is 1 by 3 2 i minus j minus 2 k. Now, we calculate this dot product and this will be 16 plus 1 plus uh, 20 is not it? Yes. So, we will ultimately obtain 37 by 3. So, directional derivative of the function f at the point p. Uh, in the direction of this vector a is given as 37 by 3. So, of course, it is a scalar quantity and um, it is calculated in this fashion. 
all right so this was our first example we will practice few i mean like two or three more examples just to make the concept clear um, let's let us consider an example find the directional derivative directional derivative of a scalar point function scalar point function f in the direction of coordinate axes so this is our example too so it's also a very interesting example we have to calculate the directional derivative of a function f in the direction of coordinate axes so that means if i draw my coordinate axes so this is x axis this is my y axis and this is z axis right so we have to calculate um, direction de directional derivative in the direction of coordinate axis that means in the direction of x axis in the direction of y axis and in the direction of z axis so when we are calculating in the direction of x axis the directional derivative so then in that case um, what will be our unit vector so if we are calculating the directional derivative in the direction of x axis that means um, the unit vector is basically the, the, the vector along this direction um, is actually i cap because x axis is perpendicular to y z plane and uh, the unit vector um, for this um, for, 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 for this uh, uh, x axis in a way the, uh, is actually i cap. So i cap is the unit vector in the direction of x axis and uh, our a cap previously in the formula is actually i cap so i is the the, the unit vector which is uh, perpendicular to uh, yz plane and it is along the direction of x axis and uh, therefore we use it as a normal in this case all right so let us see what is our directional derivative in the direction of x axis first so we have to calculate along the coordinate axis that means we have to calculate the directional derivative along the x axis along the y axis and along the z axis so we have to calculate the direction derivative along all these three axes all right so let's see uh, the given for the given let me write for the given scalar function or scalar point function scalar point function f x y z gradient of f at any point x y z is the vector del f del x del f del y and del f del z yeah. all right so that's our gradient of f and at any point p so that point p is x y z so i can write it as p and then i can write p at here so this is the gradient of the function f at any point p x y z and therefore the directional derivative or the directional derivative the directional derivative along x axis is so i will write df uh, at the point p is equals to gradient of f at the point p dot a cap and a cap is the unit uh, vector along x axis so along x axis the unit vector is given as i cap all right so we will write gradient of f at p dot i cap 
Now, if we take the dot product of del f del x i plus del f del y j plus del f del z k with i, then in that case only first term will survive, the rest of the term will be 0 because the component of j and k is 0 in case of this vector. So, here in this in case of this vector, j and k components are 0. So, when we take the dot product, only del f del x will survive, right. So, del f del x times i plus del f del y times j and uh, del f del z times k dot product with i. So, if I take the dot product, then this will yield del f del x. So, that is the directional derivative of the function f uh, at any point p in the direction of x axis, right. Similarly, the directional derivative of the function f at the point p along y axis is will proceed in the similar fashion and uh, this will be basically del f del y and uh, similarly the directional derivative along z axis for the function f at the point p is uh, del f del z. So, d f d d f uh, at p is del f del z. So, basically in this case we got three directional derivative um, and each one of them are directed along three different um, I mean along three different directions. So, the first one is directed directional derivative along x axis, the second one is directional derivative along y axis and third one is directional derivative along, along, along z axis and uh, you just have to know that i, j and k are the three unit vectors along x, y and z axis respectively and uh, rest of the things are very easy. So, this is uh, an another interesting example. So, you might be given a function f as uh, x square y plus uh, 3 y square z and uh, then you will be asked to calculate the directional derivative along x axis. So, you just have to calculate these um, gradients and um, uh, based on that uh, you just take the dot product and if, if you are asked to calculate just along the x axis then you just calculate del f del x and that will be your required answer at a point p. So, this is an interesting example which I wanted to um, uh, show. We will move on to our uh, next example, example 3. So, um, find the directional derivative of the function f x y z equals to x square minus y square plus 2 z square at the point at the point p 1 2 3 in the direction of the line p q where q is the point five zero and four all right so, here we are asked to calculate the directional derivative of the function f uh, which is given uh, at the point p, but instead of giving a, direct, a vector to in, in the direction of which we are supposed to calculate the directional derivative, we are given an another point and uh, the vector which you obtain by joining p to q uh, along which we have to calculate the directional derivative. Now, if you are familiar with vector algebra, if you have a, if you have two points, let us say p and q, then the vector p q can be obtained by writing p q as o q minus o p. So, you take the distance from the origin and then you take the, uh, for q take the distance for p from the origin and then you subtract them and that will give you the uh, required vector p q or p to q. So, that is some, that is exactly what we are going to do here. So, first of all in order to calculate the directional derivative, we need to calculate the gradient of the given function. So, that is where uh, we start from. So, here the given function 
is f x y z equals to x square minus y square um, plus 2 z square. Then del f del x i del f del y j and del f del z k. So, when I take del f del x then it will be 2 x i and then minus of 2 y j and then 4 z k. So, that is the required uh, gradient of the function f at the point p. Uh, at, uh, uh, in general, the gradient of the function um, is given by this way. Now, we have to calculate the gradient of the function at the point p. So, the point p is 1, 2, 3. So, that means, uh, we have 2 times 1 times i minus 2 times 2 times j plus 4 times 3 k. So, this will be 2 i minus 4 j plus 12 Alright. So, this is the required um, gradient of the function f at the point p. Now, we have to calculate the directional derivative along the direction of p to q. So, the vector or the direction vector, so the direction vector is p to q, right. So, p to q can be given that is, that is let me write this in a clear manner. So, that is p to q is equals to o q minus o p. So, o q is what is that point? Uh, 5 0 4. So, we have 5 i plus 0 z plus 4 k minus i minus 2 j minus 3 k. So, this will be 4 i minus of 2 j plus k right. So, along direction along this vector p to q we have to calculate the directional derivative. I will call it as uh, let us say a, a, a vector. So, say p q is our vector a all right. So, from here I can Right, say. So, from here a cap is a by mod of a. So, this will be 4 i minus 2 j plus k divided by 16 plus 4 plus 1. So, this is basically 4 i minus 2 j plus k divided by square root of 21. All right. And now, the required directional derivative of f at the point p is given by gradient of f at the point p dot product with a cap. So, gradient of f at the point p is 2 i minus 4 j plus 12 k. So, this is 2 i minus 4 j plus 12 k dot product with 4 i minus 2 j plus k square root of 21. So, whatever you get after the simplification. So, here you just have to take the dot product and ultimately we will be able to obtain 28 by 21 uh, times uh, square root of 21. So, this is ultimately 4 by 3 square root of 21. So, that is the required directional derivative of the function f in the direction uh, of p to q. So, here the direction vector let us say is not given and we had to calculate the direction vector by just uh, I mean how to say writing p q as uh, o q minus o p. Uh, you just substitute the value take the difference and um, that is your required um, uh, direction vector and from there we have to calculate uh, the unit vector. So, we divided it by uh, its magnitude and that gave us the gave us a cap and therefore, the required directional derivative of f at the point p is the gradient of f at p dot product with a cap and that is your required answer. All right. Now, we will calculate uh, another example. So, 
So, what is So, we know that directional derivative is the rate of change of function f uh, with respect to the with respect to the, uh, the uh, with respect to the distance um, in the direction of a unit vector. So, d f d s. So, d f d s is uh, the directional derivative or the de rate of change of the function f with respect to the distance or length in the direction of a vector uh, a cap or a whatever we would like to say um, basically a cap. So, from that formula, the directional derivative is nothing but gradient of uh, f um, at the at a certain point p dot product with a cap, right? So this uh, directional derivative, it will be maximum in what direction? I mean, what is the maximum value of this uh, directional derivative? In 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 which direction would it be maximum? So the thing is. Um, the maximum value would be attained um, if I mean if we consider this uh, a cap as a as a unit vector. Uh, so it is actually a unit vector, but if um, let's say if if that's um, um, that's uh, that's that's equals to gradient of f by gradient of mod of gradient of f. That means uh, it's maximum along the direction of um, uh, along the direction of gradient basically. So, instead of considering a, uh, a is equals to any arbitrary vector, vector if we consider a is equals to gradient of f. So, that is what I am trying to say that if we consider a is equals to gradient of f, then in that case a cap is uh, gradient of f by uh, gradient a uh, norm of uh, gra um, mod of gradient of f and uh, when we take the dot product then it will be basically mod of gradient of f. So, that means the maximum value maximum value is attained when the directional derivative is equals to the gradient of f mod of gradient of f. So, that is the maximum value. So, what, what I am trying to say is that if we have d f equals to um, gradient of f a cap and the a cap if I write a cap. So, a cap is basically a unit vector along which we are calculating the directional derivative. So, a cap is equals to gradient of f, then in that case uh, this will be mod of gradient of f and this is the this is the maximum value for of the directional derivative. So, in the direction of uh, gradient of f the maximum value is attained. So, basically the maximum value of the directional derivative is attained in the direction of gradient of f. So, instead of taking any vector a if you take gradient of f itself right. So, you have a given surface if you take a as the gradient of f and uh, here instead of uh, any a uh, if as a a cap if we take gradient of f by mod of gradient of f then uh, we will basically be left with mod of gradient of f as the directional derivative and that is the maximum value of the directional derivative or maximum rate of change of the function um, f given um, given as a uh, scalar function. So, this is a very vital result that in, in the calculate the direction derivative in the maximum rate of in the direction of maximum rate of change. So, that direction is basically the direction of the gradient of f and this is the message I am trying to convey. So, the direction of uh, maximum rate of change is basically the gradient of f. So, along which uh, the function is uh, uh, how to say um, has the greatest uh, or attains the maximum rate of change uh, and um, um, that can be basically the directional derivative uh, along the direction of the maximum rate of change is given by mod of gradient of f all right. So, we will do the same thing here. So, basically we will uh, try to solve this example in our next class and uh, we will stop here for today 
and uh, we'll continue with the same example in our next class we'll try to solve this and uh, then we will continue with uh, some more examples on directional derivative so um, i thank you for your attention for today and i'll see you in the next class